Good afternoon. My name is Father Ted Smith. I'm a classmate of Father Keith's, and what I do, he will be doing in two weeks. <laughs> Retired. So I'm very happy to be here with you. I draw your attention to the icon of St. Joseph. After Mass, you may want to come up and look at it. It's here by courtesy of the Knights. And also, it's Era First Communion, and we're very happy to be with her and her family at this time. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Coming together as God's family on this, the Feast of Christ the King, the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, let us pause, consider our poorness of the heart, our poverty of spirit. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Amen. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Amen. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, to live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, after Abram's return, King Melchizedek of Salem brought out his bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. He blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by the God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and be blessed by God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abram gave him one-tenth of everything. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I've received from the Lord what I've also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Jesus, when you were invited to a dinner, 
the obligation of the host was to wash the feet of each guest and anoint them with oil. Jesus is invited to this dinner. None of that customary ritual is done. In the midst of the dinner, a person with, quote, a poor reputation in the town throws herself at the feet of Jesus, washes his feet with her tears, and dries them with her hair. Jesus looks at her and says, what do you want? She says, sir, forgiveness of my sins. And Jesus says, your sins are many. Go, your sins are forgiven. Don't sin anymore. Jesus meets the common need. In today's gospel, prior to the reading of this gospel, Jesus has sent the apostles out to cure, to heal, to proclaim the kingdom of God. They are extremely excited. This is, shall we say, their first soul, the first time going off on their own without Jesus. And it has been an incredibly successful experience. So they come back to Jesus and they want to share all that they've done. So Jesus, knowing the common need, says, let's go over to Bethsaida, to a lonely place, and we will share, discover, affirm what you have done. However, 5,000 people, they also want a piece of Jesus, and they know where he's going. So they go, and all of a sudden, there's not the 12 apostles, there's 12 apostles plus 5,000 people. Now I have been to the Holy Land several times. I have been to the field where Jesus fed the 5,000. It's an incredible experience. If you are at the top of the hill, and it's a rolling hillside. And just to stop and think and try and imagine the 5,000 people there. Jesus meets the common need. He knows all about us. There is a well-known saying, and it is this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, and courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Jesus could not change the minds of the scribes and the Pharisees, so we are no different than Jesus. There are some situations in our faith journey that we will not be able to change. And yet, graces are given because Jesus knows the common need. Give me the, and God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and courage to change the things I can. Courage to change the things I can. My uncle, who's now dead, was a terrible alcoholic. Just terrible. Each Christmas, he would tie one up. And around two o'clock on a Christmas afternoon, my mother would go to the table and she would remove two plates from the Christmas table because my aunt and uncle weren't coming. He had tied one on again and ruined a Christmas for everyone. God grant me the courage to accept the things I cannot change 
and courage to change the things I can. One day, my uncle got tired of that way of life, and graces were given, and he stopped drinking just like that. And he was liberated from that demon, the bottle. And he truly began to live again. And he had a wonderful, wonderful life after he gave up the bottle. And wisdom to know the difference. In the parishes that I was always sent to, they were always neglected parishes. For whatever reason, they had been neglected. And I always like to go into a parish and build it up. So it was not without controversy, of course, because there's always a very, very, very small minority who don't want any change. And the changes I made were not that great. The wisdom to know the difference, to know what can be accomplished, what should be accomplished, Jesus gives us the grace to heal and to liberate. So this week, as we begin a new week, let us take into our week the reality that Jesus came to liberate, to forgive, and to encourage people to begin again. And let us take for our model this week, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. For the church, that in a world darkened by conflict and strife, may it be a beacon of unity and a haven of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world, especially in Ukraine and all other countries where there is senseless violence, killing and destruction. May all the world leaders work together for justice and freedom for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers this weekend, in gratitude for their love and self-sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, the Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are ill, especially Brian Finmore, Olivera Lametta, Joan Grogan, Christine Boyd, Joseph Cesar, 
Mary Teresa O'Reilly, Anne Hamlin, John Krasinski, Joe Krasinski, Gabriel Moore, Joan Jones, Gary Gardner, Carol Ann Fraser, Stephanie Armstrong, Brian Gavin, Colleen Richards, Autumn Jean, and Mary McDermott. May God comfort them in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, to our prayer. For our departed relatives and friends who partook of the Eucharist, that God may bring them to peace of refreshment, light, and peace, we pray to the God. To the Lord. For our own special needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the repose of the soul of John Turkovich, whose mass this is being offered for. For him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for listening to our prayers. We ask you to give us the grace and let us use the grace to dispel the darkness in our lives and move towards your marvelous light through Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offering we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For at the Last Supper, when his apostles establishing for the ages to come, the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new hymn and adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim.
will say the third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that for the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At his command, we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints of his constant intercession, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your very own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious, we grant peace in our day. That for the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, we beseech you not to look on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us acknowledge the person closest to us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Tom Ulick, the Grand Knight of uh, our uh, Heads Clubs Council, uh, St. Jude Council, for bringing us the icon of St. Joseph. Uh, this icon has been going through the Durham district, uh, parish by parish, and it uh, is going uh, on display at all the masses in various parishes, and I believe it's going to the schools as well. This is the year of St. Joseph, and therefore uh, the Knights are honoring St. Joseph with this icon. If you want to come up and take a look at it before you leave, feel free to do so. Also, uh, you're invited back again tomorrow after the 11.30 Mass, if you're able to uh, come uh, down into the hall for a little bit of a reception. Uh, it's kind of like a meet and greet, hi, goodbye get lost, whatever. Uh, so you're more than welcome to, uh, to come. I assure you the refreshments will be delicious as they always are. And uh, I'll talk again next week. So as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, we have a very beautiful person here who's received Jesus in communion for the first time. So we invite her to come up and get her little certificate. Now, turn around, turn around. Oh, oh hold it now, turn it, oh, oh, oh. Now remember, in 20 years from now, when someone says to you, who was that priest with the George Clooney looks that gave me my first communion? The name Smith, okay? Okay. Enjoy your evening. 